Howdy folks, welcome back. Had a few people ask about a part three on the John Deere 2940 tractor, so I figured we might as well go ahead and do that. Got just enough work here, I think, to squeak out a decent video. We have a power steering leak to fix, a fuel leak to fix, and then the rest of the engine to put back together, and we need to 100% verify that the, the engine is good to go. So previously I removed this crusty power steering hose. That is the source of our leak in the power steering system. I believe that's the supply hose, so that's gonna provide the oil to the hydrostatic motor. Anyway, this actual hose is obsolete. Now to me, it has some pretty strange fittings. It has these uh, kind of external O-ring fittings. And some kindly European viewers pointed out that these are DIN hydraulic fittings. Apparently bog standard across the pond. However, we, we don't run into those here. Normally in the US we are dealing with standard JIC taper fittings or the SAE style O-ring fittings. There are occasionally metric O-ring fittings as well, but they're basically the same as the SAE fittings. And then once in a while we run into some Japanese stuff, JIS, which is super confusing because it's almost exactly the same as the stuff we use domestically. Anyway, to make a long story longer, so here's what I got from John Deere. It's this gigantic hose here. And it has the correct fittings on both ends. Now, it kind of comes as a kit. It also includes a loom clamp and a grommet. So I think what we're gonna be doing is eliminating a bulkhead fitting. I'll show you more about that in a minute. And I also bought a new T and a nut and seal for the fuel return line. So here's the steering wheel and the steering column. And down here at the bottom of the column is a bulkhead fitting. So the hose connects here and runs down to a supply line down here behind the battery. And then that little short hose that I showed you guys that was all broken up connects on the inside of the steering column to the opposite side of this bulkhead fitting and then runs up to the hydraulic motor which is right about here. Anyway, I think what's gonna happen is the kit that we bought is going to eliminate this bulkhead fitting and then that's where the grommet comes into play. So the grommet's gonna go in that hole and then we're gonna basically eliminate this line and the crusty line that we, we had the problem with. So we're gonna have to tear this all apart all the way down, way down here underneath where the batteries are. So, and of course my light, of course my light's going dead. Anyway, this is pretty, pretty greasy. Uh, I don't think I can run it like it is to, to take it outside and pressure wash it because as soon as we start the tractor, we're gonna have oil everywhere. That's a, that's a main supply line. Okay, I'm trying out an external microphone. You guys will have to tell me whether or not the audio is better. It's never going to be good because the shop's basically just an, you know, an empty square box, so it echoes really bad in here. Anyway, this is the hose we got from the dealership. It has the female DIN fitting on both ends. It is in fact made in Germany. But it's not going to work because the other end of that hose that I took apart has a standard 37 degree flare JIC fitting. So this is a dash six, nine sixteenths, 18 thread. And it obviously isn't gonna work with this metric hose. So we need an adapter. Uh, my local auto parts store makes hydraulic hoses. They are a dealer for Gates. So I jumped on the Gates catalog, found an adapter from uh, whatever it is, dash 12, DIN to dash six JIC. So it's M18 thread on one end and 9 16 18 on the other end. They have them in stock. I can have it tomorrow. So we're gonna have to wait for that, which is the story of my life. But at least we can get it. So I guess the idea is that this hose has to pass through that hole. And then they give us a grommet I guess it's supposed to protect it, but we're gonna have to drill it out because the hose won't even fit through that hole. And then the grommet is uh, one inch outside diameter. So it's split two 
think they just cut it by hand. I don't think it's big enough to, or stretchy enough to fit over those fittings. Anyway, we're just going to use a step drill to try to drill that thing out to one inch. We'll see if I can reach it. I don't know. And hopefully not hit anything inside there. Yeah, that's gonna work. Be sure to comment that I'm using the file wrong. That's always fun to read. Oh yeah, that'll work. So, I wonder how we're gonna get that grommet in there. Do do how tight does it fit on the hose? Yeah, it's got a little slop. I don't know, that might be fun to fish in there. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, I think we're in business. So here's our adapter. That's the gate's part number. This side fits in that style of fitting. Looks good. And then this goes. Awesome. I wonder what the John Deere dealer would have done about that. I didn't even bother to ask. Well, can you guys see this? Probably not. Here we go. So there's our connection to the transmission. And here's our new hose. So I put a cap in it. I think that's going to work. Good deal. is this going to make? Probably a lot. So you got, hopefully you guys can see the threads on that. They're all chewed up.
Okay. It's amazing this stuff works at all. This is a really, in my opinion, crappy system. But what are you going to do? The better ones. I think the better ones is like what Cummins or Mac does where they have the, they just have this press on style of hose, flexible hose that runs from injector to injector. Those don't ever give trouble. Dad? What's wrong, Hara? I need. Mix up. Well, it wouldn't be a proper video without some sketchy wiring repairs. So I found this coiled up wire inside that mouse nest. See, it's all chewed up. And then the end of it was wrapped around this wire and covered up with some electrical tape. I see there's also a wire nut and then the wires are rubbed through or chewed through here. So we better fix that. We don't want the thing catching on fire. I don't know what this wire is for. Possibly for some kind of a sprayer or something that they had attached to it. I don't know. Doesn't matter, I'm not putting it back. We're just gonna fix this wiring. Put it back like it's supposed to be. Or at least how I think it's supposed to be. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna leave everything else alone. So I'll just leave this wire coiled up in here and if he wants to put it back, he can. I'm not doing it. All right guys, I'm happy with this. The cooling system seems to be working. It stays nice and cool. I can hear it building pressure. So it you know, it has hisses a little bit out of the overflow when you shut it off. So I know that's working. I had to kind of tweak this radiator cap a little bit. It was, it was not right. Anyway, I think it's gonna be fine. The customer replaced the thermostats when he first started having this problem. So we don't need to worry about that. And we got our new T on the return. I don't see any leaks on the injectors. I think we got that all sorted out. So I'm happy with it. Looks good. I got all the intake tubing hooked back up. That all looks good. I really like this new valve cover gasket. That's going to work out well. And then the oil change did solve our problem with the steam coming out of the breather. Must have just had a whole bunch of coolant emulsified in that old oil. So good thing to change that. We got a new fuel filter, new oil filter. 
that all looks good. And then our power steering issue seems to be totally resolved. So I got that grommet installed in there. And then I just put a little piece of hose on here to protect that new hose from the sharp edge of this floor plate here. So that repair actually looks pretty good. I'm just kind of, I don't understand why the kit didn't come with the adapter that we needed. Uh, but it didn't end up being that big of a deal. It just cost me one day. That's kind of expensive. It's like $35 for that adapter. But, you know, what are you going to do? Max, come on. Hey! 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 Stop! 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 Max! Stop. Dog, you scared the crap out of me. Are you okay? Jeepers. He got his head stuck in the between the bumper and the tire in here. He's trying to sniff for something. Hey, how about you don't do that again, huh? I don't know if I had the camera on or not. <sighs> You're a pain in the butt, dog. Ah. Oh. Don't do that again, okay? This thing just starts and runs perfectly. Uh, one more thing. Previously I said that there was no oil cooler on this tractor? That's not correct. It does have an oil cooler. It's actually built into the oil filter base. I don't know how I missed that, but yeah, it definitely has one. Well, there you go, folks. How to fix your John Deere 2940 tractor that spits cooling out the radiator cap every time you start it up. And actually ended up being a, a fairly straightforward job. I've got... I just did the invoice. I think I've got about 14 hours in this job total. That includes the head gasket, all the rocker arm issues, and the power steering leak that we fixed. And total bill for parts, I think is about between $500 and $600. So the actual head gasket set's pretty reasonable. It's only like $110 for the, the gasket set. That's the John Deere gasket. But where we spent a lot of money was the other stuff. So uh, $200 worth of rocker arms, uh, you know, fuel filters, oil filters, oil itself adds another probably $100. And then the power steering line, the actual hose was 120 bucks. That adapter was almost $40. So it adds up pretty quickly. So thanks guys for watching. I just got the last of the parts for that Ford E350. So we're gonna go ahead and do that one next. Hopefully we'll have a, a part two video on that pretty soon.
particular. Hey, lady. Hey. Are you recording? We're supposed to be not talking. Oh. I'm doing an experiment with a repair video where I don't have any narration or commentary. Oh. Uh, well, to be fair, I walked in here and didn't say anything. You talked to me first. I think it'll be super weird, but people still are convinced that I talk too much. So, this is going to be the proof. I get paid money to talk. It's pretty cool. To children? Yeah, they don't listen, so. Oh, but now, a lot of them are wishing that they did have me to listen to. All right, I'm gonna go very fast. Have fun.
Helps if you tighten the hoses. All right, folks, there you go. Repacking the tilt cylinder on your Clark GCX forklift. You guys tell me if that was pointless or if it was the Nirvana that the whiners have made it out to be. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. See you next time.